Today's social media segment is brought to you by Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. Welcome to this edition of Going Public. I'm your host, Keith Weissite, licensed clinical social worker with Terrebonne Home Care. Very glad you're joining us. However you may be joining us, I appreciate it very, very much. And we're very glad to have with us our friend and colleague, David Rabelais. David, thanks for joining us, man. Happy to be here. All right, David, of course, with the Port of Terrebonne. And, uh, you know, people always want to know a little bit about the history, but I love the fact that you put together a little PowerPoint for us to really walk everyone through a better understanding of that. Yeah, uh, everybody wants to know what we do, and, you know, a lot of people don't really know, so I figured I would uh, put something together to let everybody know. Okay, you know? that's so, right. Uh, so the port was created in 1964. Oh, long time. Uh, Seven-member commission. It was it was created by state legis legis legislation. Okay. Uh, so from 1964 to 2007, it was fully funded by Terrebonne Parish, but they didn't do nothing. They okay. Had, they, they, you know, they did get a grant in at the end of uh, 2000, at the end of the 1990s, and w were able to dig a slip and put a, a shell road in. And that's that's basically wow. all they had up to 2006. Wow. So 40 or 50 years, they didn't really, you know, they okay. were actually created the same time Port Fushun was created. Oh, that's interesting. So, um, so from 2000, so from 1964 to 2007, fully funded by Terrebonne Parish. 2008 to present, it's been funded by the port. We, we self, self-sustained. Okay. Uh, our jurisdiction includes all navigable waterways in Terrebonne Parish. Uh, the property was purchased in 1970, the piece of property on industrial. Right. Um, and since 2006, we've signed really over 20 leases. To wow. Build. So so we, and that's how we fund ourselves. We, we lease property, we build infrastructure. Right. And we probably got $150 million plus in grants since 2006. Wow. All right. So next slide. Seven member commissioners. Um our, our president is Bill Purvis, Vice President Steve Crispino, Secretary Treasurer Greg Landry, uh, Dan Davis, Jacob Brown, Joe Caldwell, and John DeBlue John, John are all um, members. Went to school with half those guys. Yeah. yeah some good guys. Um, so Terrebonne Parish Council has three appointments. The parish president has two. SCIA has one, and the Chamber of Commerce has one. And that's how we get. That's how we make up the board. That's the board. Okay, that, that's good to know because I didn't know that. Yeah. You know about how that how who had appointments for that. So, so it's good to know. So what happens is is every appointment, ha, ha, three names have to be nominated. And, okay. And and the council. Um, ratifies or selects one one of the three and okay. one of the three so right. um it's uh that's the way they do it okay very nice all right next slide <clears throat> so the way we get our revenue like i was alluding to earlier we lease property uh we leverage funds against our funds against grants so we we uh try to you know get more infrastructure put in right uh we keep up with state and federal government legislation we manage the agency maintenance, the Home and Navigation Canal. Right. We we uh, we also manage the Home and Navigation Canal deepening, mm -hmm. and we're a local voice for industry. So the Home and Navigation Canal uh, was authorized for construction in 1957. Um, the original channel was designed and built to minus 15 foot mean low gulf depth. Uh, Operation and maintenance of the agency is maintained by the U U.S. Army Corps of Engineers okay. uh, through federal funding. And Terrebonne Port Commission is the managing entity of the agency responsible for ongoing operations, future developments, and expansion of waterborne industry along the agency. And, and the, the port was created in 1964. Okay. So right about the same time. Yeah. So uh, the agency is Terrebonne Parish's only means of transporting large manufactured goods and, and, and an access for vessels that service the U.S. Gulf of Mexico. The economy of this entire region, consisting of thousands of jobs, depends heavily on the agency for the support of the fabrication industry and is considered critical industry infrastructure. 
Well, and, and that's something that's really important. I mean, I don't know that people realize that that is kind of the hub, if you will, of those industries. Exactly. Through the home and navigational canal. And it's important for the port to maintain. Like, your job is to maintain it. Your job is to make sure the deepening is working. I mean, we, we've had to do a lot of different work in there, Absolutely. as we talked over the years, to make sure that we're allowing for commerce to keep passing through. Exactly. It's a critical, it's a critical component of our economy. I like to say it's the main artery to the heartbeat of Terrebonne's uh, economy. And, okay. when, and when it silts in, the, our, our economy goes into cardiac arrest, okay, because the main artery is clogged. So we've yeah. got to do a stent, which is dredge. Okay. So that kind of puts it in medical, in, medical, yeah. uh, in medical terms, okay? Yeah, the, cardi the cardiac needs of the, yeah. the cardiac needs of our uh, H&C. That's right. That's right. All right. All right. So the River and Harbor Act of October 23, 1962, provided for federal maintenance and was initiated on November 27, 1964. This act was a mandate by Congress for federal government to maintain the authorized depth of 15 feet. Which, which like you said, is always changing because silt is always coming down, right? The minute, well, it doesn't come down. It goes east-west. Oh, east-west, right. So, so just so everybody knows, and, uh, and, and we'll see this in a video in our next segment, but uh, the bay, uh, Terrebonne Bay, is 12 miles in diameter, <clears throat> and that's the, the tail end of the home and Ave. The home and Ave is 40 miles long. Right. Starts at the end of coast and goes all the way. But when it travels through uh, Terrebonne Bay, <clears throat> Terrebonne Bay has an east-west predominant current and, and predominant winds. And, and basically the, 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 uh, the bay is 12 feet deep, all right? And we just came in right down the middle of the bay and we put a three-foot trench in there. So now we got 15 feet of water. 12 and now it's okay? 15. Okay. And it, but it's a sediment trap. So when, so when the material goes east to west and it, and it kind of goes over the, the home and nav, the heaviest sediment falls out into the, cha into the channel. So <clears throat> that's the only place we dredge is in the bay. In the bay. And in it's, that it's, it's okay. every, every, we could probably do it twice a year, but, you know, uh, it silts in like the minute we finish dredging and right. starts silting again. Start again. Gotcha. So, okay, that's very good clarification. Thank you, Dave. So the deepening project. Okay. So we, uh, <clears throat> first we had to get it authorized, okay? <clears throat> I'm going to take you through the author authorization process. Okay. In 1997, as part of the Morganza to the Gulf protection, Hurricane Protection Study, Project Study, the, the lock report determined the seal depth, which is the bottom of the, where the lock kind of seal, seals at the bottom, but it's a seal, uh, was designed at a depth of 20 feet. Okay, this is the levee district doing this. Okay. Since industry was already demanding a deeper channel due to the demand of the deep water oil and gas industry, for a 20-foot channel depth, the lock seal would need to be at 23 feet because you get three foot of advanced maintenance. Okay. So that was all done and, and negotiated in, in, the, in the late 90s. Okay. okay. So in, in 1998, at the request of Terrebonne Port Commission, the Home and Navigation Canal Deepening Reevaluation was started to evaluate deepening the home and after 20 feet. March 2001, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers completed the preliminary evaluation, and it was determined that further federal participation was warranted based on the national economic development benefits. Okay. All right, so now we fast forward to 2009. Up until 2009, the agency deepening study was funded as part of the Morganza study due to the lock being part of the Morganza. In 2009, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers decided that the HNC deepening study would no longer be funded under Morganza because a key feature of the study is the home and navigation canal lock and floodgate, which is actually a major component of the Morganza. Since the Morganza project was not yet federally authorized, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers could not continue the HNC deepening study at that point. Huh. So in 2011, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers suggested that DOTD take over the study because they weren't getting, the Corps wasn't getting anywhere with it. Okay. So they, they suggested DOTD take over the study under the guidelines of a, what they call a Section 203, which is a section in the 1986 Water Bill. In order for DOTD to take over the study, they had to enter into a memorandum of agreement, an MOA, with the Corps. Okay. The Corps suggested that the that in, in the essence of time, DOTD use a, previously executed core MOA on a similar project as a template since the core legal department had already approved the format. Okay. Okay, so this is in November of 2011. Hmm. December of 2013, 26. 26 months after initiation, the MOA was finally signed. 
Okay, so just to sign an agreement that they wanted DOT to take over the study. Two years. But just to sign the agreement to allow them to take over the study took 26 months. All right, the 26-month delay was due to the Corps headquarters and the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works not being able to agree on policy and procedures. So on January 2014, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers handed the study over to DOTD with the assurance that the study was 98% complete. Don't ever believe that. <laughs> DOTD initiated the Section 203. Right. In 2017, under DOTD's direction, years, the study moved forward. It was nowhere near 98% complete when handed off to DOTD. Also, because the study was lasting so long, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers required that the environmental impact study be updated with current information. This request increased the study budget by 250000 The study arrived in D.C. in December of 2017. We requested authorization by Congress in 2018 were to bill. 2018 authorization didn't happen because they have to do a whole bunch of stuff when it gets to D.C. and it took too long and it, it was three weeks late to get under the word of bill. Wow. It was finally authorized in December of 2020. That was Trump's last month. Or, yeah. Okay. So, so Trump's last month in 2020 it was finally authorized. Yeah. Wow. So the Section 203... Uh, was was approved and and it became public law December twenty seventh two thousand and twenty, uh, for the home and have to be deep into twenty feet. Okay, so they finally got to that point. Maybe a good stopping point yes. for us, just to kind of see how long it took and how many years and how much effort it was made to kind of go through all these steps. Yep. And if there's ever red tape, that's it. And this one was wet red tape. It was bad. Because it was, we can't get water deep. In, it was double get, stick tape. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and you couldn't get I away like from it. it. Well, David, we appreciate the updates. We look forward to more information. We'll stick around and do that. All right. Second half? Yep. All right, very good. All right, guys, David's going to stick around. You do that as well. We'll be right back here on Going Public in just a minute. <laughs> Today's social media segment is brought to you by South Louisiana Bank. It's better when we bank together. Weights and Downer, attorneys at law. Terrebonne Ford, built Ford Tough. Welcome back to this edition of Going Public. I'm so very glad that you're joining us as your host, Keith Weissack. Thank you. Joined by David Rabelais, of course, uh, with the port. And so we appreciate it very much, David. Well, glad to be here. I appreciate that. Talking about the channel deepening and how long it's taken and kind of walk us through where we are with the uh, deepening overview. All right. Um, the next slide will show at the bottom of the slide, it shows the uh, the cubic yard. So initial construction to the dredge volume will be 7,564,500 cubic yards. That's wow. the initial going from 15 to 8 to 20. Right. And then the total maintenance volume over 50 years, and I don't know why they do this, but it's 63,718,000 cubic yards. And that's just oh, a guess. Over 50 years. That's just a guess. Oh, you of know? course. So... If I get my way and I get rocks in the uh, along the channel in the in the bay, right, we'll have a lot less, a whole lot less to have yeah, to do. Exactly. Okay, good. That's just a smarter way to do things, right? Yeah, cost a little money up front, but you save a lot of money on the back. Sure, end. sure. All right, next slide. So the total cost of the project. Um, the bottom line total co project cost is 176. The federal the federal share is 176 million 812 thousand seven hundred dollars. The non-federal share, which is us in the state, is 77 million 
$285,900 for a total cost of $254,098,600. Wow. So it's going to cost a deepen. Yeah. And, and the core and the state have already signed an agreement okay. with us and, and together, all, all, three, all three entities, <clears throat> and uh, they have agreed to pay, the, the feds have agreed to pay the 176 and the uh, state has agreed to pay the $77 million. Oh, wow. Very good. So um, we just have to do all the legwork and right. keep, keep the project going. And right. <clears throat> so that's what we do. Very good. Next slide. Okay. So, this is a list of the pipelines we found, okay? And as you can see at the bottom of the second column, it's uh, 53, 53 crossings. crossings. <clears throat> now, oh. that, that is going up to 57. This is an older slide. Okay. <clears throat> now, a lot of them, uh, so in the Bay, I think we have 17 of them, and they're all pipelines, gas, pipe, oil, whatever. And, right. and so uh, we, we have contacted all the oil companies and pipeline companies, and we're in the process of negotiating with them. Um, most of their right-of-way agreements and their permits say that they have to lower it if, we have, if, if it's due to navigation. So of course uh, they of course they don't want to and they don't want to right. spend the money and so we you know we're at the beginning stages of that we got to get the first one under our belt and get it moving and and then just follow through with all the rest. Now north of Cocodry is um, is the um, the bulk of the rest of them, okay, of the okay. 57. But a lot of those are, are water lines, sewer lines. Now, that doesn't mean we have to lower all these. That just means that we've identified them. Right. We're going to probe them. We're going to figure out the depth of cover. And then we meet with the core, and they decide which ones we have to lower. Okay. They, they want 15 foot of cover over the bottom. So over the mud, the mud line, they want 15 foot 15 of cover. Feet. Okay, so, makes sense. And it used to be eight foot. So now, so it's almost double. Some of them they've grandfathered in, depending on the type of line it is. But some of them we have to lower down to 15. 15. Some of them we don't have to lower at all. They pretty deep, you know. Okay. So just kind of depends. So 57 utilities are, are lines uh, that we have to deal with. A lot. It is a lot. But we can't start digging until the lock and floodgate is. Completed. Completed, right. And so it buys us about three or four years, but at some point with the the lock and floodgate is starting to move forward. So, um, you know, we got three or four years to get the lines lowered. Hopefully we do it. If not, we're going to be shortly thereafter. You right, know? right, right. So um, now i got a series of pictures that's just kind of general pictures. Show, show, okay, so this is a Schwest uh, boat. This is before we built our ship, and this is how they used to launch them. It was a side launch. Okay. And it was a big cradle, and it would lean over, and it would, the boat would slide off. and Slide right into the water. It was pretty neat, you know. Um, now, they use dry docks, which, right. is, which is the next picture. This happens to be a dry dock that we own. We, we built two of them for Thomasy with a grant, and they lease them back from us. So, oh, okay, very so nice. that's part of our revenue stream. Sure. And then we built a big one for our ship, probably twice the size, three times the size as that one. Uh, and and they, uh, they build their vessels in, their sh in a big warehouse, and then they roll them out on railroad tracks uh, and roll them onto the dry dock, and, right. then they, and then they launch them. From dry dock, they launch Yeah, they sink the dry dock, and, it, and the boat floats off. Okay, very cool. What is this shot of? So the next shot is a, a piece of property uh, located on Industrial Boulevard. Now it's a terrible okay. port. Okay. Okay, that's when, that's based, that's like in 2004, 2005. You can see the road. You see the uh, the the slip way off to the right hand side. Uh, you you can see the turning basin and all. So this is very early in the in the development of the port. I just thought it would be interesting. And then the next slide is is uh, what it looks like today. Wow. So we got a very impressive. We got a concrete road. We we have actually two of them. One going to Thomasy and one going a mile in, um, to the back. Um, and actually, there's a little bit more. This is an older picture, but there's a little bit more out there. But um, but this is what we uh, we built, and and this is what creates jobs. Mm -hmm. um, so we're proud of it. Should be. The next slide is an old uh, oil field type metal building that we bought. Why did we buy it? And go to the in 2011. Go to the next picture. It's where our office is now. Oh wow! Totally redid it. No kidding. And we Very have customs. Impressive. We have customs and ice in the building as tenants. We have a boat launch in the back, and we just finished another space on the right hand side of the building in the front for uh, 
another customs group called the Office of Field Operations. So um, we we excited about that. Hopefully we get it. We just about done. We get it all approved, and then they can move in, and our our, our rents their rent starts. That's what we waiting on. Yeah, I got you. So it's another picture of the building. It's beautiful. Okay, this is a piece of property at the end of Dixon Road and and uh, adjacent to Munson Slip. Munson Slip is the channel that you see going straight up the, the right-hand side of the page. Right. On the water side, uh, like at the bottom of the page, that's that's the the home and navigation canal. And the uh, reason I, I, I bring this picture in is because it's pretty significant. If you go to the next slide, that's what it looks like now. That's a lost ship. And one of our tenants, oh, we, we, we built a facility. Um, we um, we dug the slip to 40 feet, so so you have a slip 40 feet deep, and that's how they're able to launch their big boats. Yeah, you know, because they have to sink that dry dock, and it's got a it's got a I think a eight or ten foot deep barge underneath it. That's what fills up with water, and then and it sinks, and then they get the boat off, and then they they pump the water out and ready for the next vessel. Very unique, very interesting. This is a picture of a tidewater boat. This is back in the, I guess, early 2000s. But this is just an example of why um, we have to deepen the channel because the vessels got bigger and bigger and bigger. This is going under the twin span right here in downtown Homa. Wow. So, uh, and this is not, a, this, is, this is, was a large boat at the time, but they, they're much larger today. Yeah. This is a jacket Gulf Island built. This is delivering a jacket to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and that's how they did it. They, they'd put them on a barge and they would get tugboats and bring them out. Ooh. This next picture is a uh, boat Thomasy built, and they 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 uh, delivered this one last year. And if you if you notice, you see the white uh, the white pieces up up against the bottom of the boat. Those are floats. Oh. They put those floats on it, and if you look at the back of the uh, the boat, you see a dry dock. It's sitting on a dry dock. Okay, so that's how they had to get it out, and you can see the mud. And this is in this is in our slip. Our slip was 15 feet. Right. Um, the home and nav was 15. It's 15 feet, right. and they um, they had to drag that boat out. Wow. So that's 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 another reason why, because it, it damages the paint, it damages stuff. So oh God, yeah. It's a it's a big chore to get them out. That's and it. this boat, this is a this is a um, a fish processor. Oh, okay. It works off the coast of uh, of, of the, off the west coast okay. around Alaska, and they go out with a crew and they catch fish and they actually process everything on the vessel. And when the vessel comes in. They back up to the dock. They offload the product, which is ready to go to the market. It's all in cases and boxes, and they switch crews and they go back out again. So it's a it's a pretty interesting um, process. They have a, a a fillet machine on this boat that does 200 fish a minute. Yeah. Holy cow. You know, a Cajun couldn't, I mean, they could keep up for a couple of hours yeah, if you give them some beer, it. but that's, yeah. you know, after that, you know, I mean, they're going to lag behind. But could you imagine 200, 200 fish a minute? 200 fish a it's minute. It's crazy. So wow. next slide, this is that this is another jacket that Gulf Island built. Um, next slide. This is this is that same jacket going through the oh, yeah. Dulac Pontoon Bridge. Holy okay. cow. So the uh the uh the jacket was actually sticking out on both sides of the barge, but it was higher than the road, so they were able to fit that barge. They th they said they had a foot on each side through that opening and uh to get it out. Wow. Amazing. Next slide. Dwarf set. Uh, this is a this is an interesting slide. Okay, it's a scary slide, but Category Four and Five hurricane landfall since 2017, and we down there right in the middle. So you got uh, Harvey, which was a Cat Four. Laura was a Cat Four. Ida was a Cat Four. Michael was a Cat Five, and Irma was a Cat Four. That's since 2017, and this is, you know, I guess you got Ida in it. So I don't know. I don't think they had it, too many big ones after that. No, but no. But this, this is enough. Oh God. Okay. Man. You wonder why your insurance is so high. It's, uh, it's exactly right. So that's it. I mean, yeah. that's so we we. Well, that's uh, a great walk down wh where we've been, how long it took us to get where we are, and why it's important to keep doing it. Yep. Exactly. It's the jobs, and yeah. it's all about the 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 economy. Right. So we um, 
we we try to stay with our tenants and 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 find out what they need and when they have to when they have a vessel that needs to go out we um we get the quarter dredge. Get it and do it. David, we appreciate your time. Thanks for the explanation. Thank you. All right. And that'll do it for us right here on Going Public. Don't go anywhere. A whole lot more right here on HTV. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Terrebonne General Health System. Your health is our legacy. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights.